Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel for the second war of the season. This is going to be a pretty fun war. I ended up taking seven fights and I got to bring in one of my favorite teams from last season, which was Apocalypse with Cable and also Nebula. Cable does take a fight. There's going to be a lot of Apocalypse fights. This is the rank four Apocalypse. And we are going up against SAS, the Super Andromeda Scrolls. We have a lot of friends over there and there's a lot of friendly competition, of course. Every time we face them, it's always an interesting war. And I will say, I think for both of us, this was the first time we were facing up an alliance that was sort of a formidable opponent on both sides. And because of that, it was a little bit of a bloodbath. There were a lot of deaths and I did contribute one of them. So, and I, I will say it was a death in glorious fashion. So stay tuned for that one. Uh, but we're gonna start off on path one with some fairly conventional apocalypse fights. This only has Arc Overload and Vigorous Assault, which just means Jabari is going to be unblockable for her portions of the fight. The way that I like to fight her with Apocalypse is to pretend that she is stun immune and to try to push her to her special 2. Um, that way you don't give her too many Huntress charges. So we're going to start off just by dashing back and she does play into what we wanted to have happen there a little bit. We're able to get the first opening and then the first unblockable is gone. Right there we baited a heavy. She very freely throws that special one. We don't want to be seeing too many of those because she could potentially get the hunt. If she does get the hunt and she's unblockable I won't be able to dex her specials so that's sort of the only danger in this fight. But right there, we get our opening. I was not expecting to get all the way to two bars of power there, so I didn't throw it. That was my mistake. Right there, I do throw the special two. The concussion does not get cleansed, probably because of ability accuracy, but the degeneration did. However, we didn't take any damage. We're still basically at a full yellow bar. And right here, we're able to throw our final special one, and that's gonna get her down. So not much of a difficult fight there, as long as you don't make any mistakes. She can definitely punish you if you get backed up into the corner or something, but we played around that pretty well and it wasn't much of an issue. So next up we have America Chavez on Masochism and Apocalypse is pretty much built for this fight in the current season for a couple reasons. Um, we just have the indestructible on. I decided to do that instead of advanced power boosts, uh, just to have the safety net instead of trying to get the fight over faster, if that makes sense. But anyway, the way he counters this fight is, of course, he is a masochism hard counter. And then because of the power down tactic, we have access to wither. So my parries are going to stick. And then if I alternate my combos between medium enders and light enders, it's going to put five withers on her. Um, right now, I'm definitely giving her a lot of power. The withers are going to stop any type of power gain. Um, I very freely push her to her special two, and I've talked about this for, before. What we want to do is bait out into Utopian Parallel, which is the first head of her heavy. heavy. Um, if you bait out the first hit of her heavy, then her special two will not be unblockable. That's just a little bit of a pro tip. So we have some minor power back boosts on. Uh, so that's how we got back to our special one. And I could bait out another special two because we're in Utopian Parallel, but I'm looking at the way this thing is and I figure I can get to my special two, push her red and just end the fight. So yeah, right there, that could have been a little bit unsafe, but I was almost positive that that would end up killing her and she wouldn't throw her special three or anything. And we did have the indestructible boost just in case. So yeah, that just sort of showed I knew how much HP was left and we just kind of went for it and it was fine. Uh, but again, the withers didn't really matter in that type of fight. Um, and once again, the pro tip was baiting out the heavy like we talked about. And next up, we have this fight that I took the last time with Nebula. And it worked well the last time, but I also sort of had the crutch team for Nebula, which was Proxima and Guillotine 2099. Um, I will note that I did turn on the recoil tree masteries right before this fight. I do think it is pretty close to essential to try to just get him down with one special two. And I'm going for the same strategy. The only difference is I'm not starting with 10 amp charges. And this is where I make a couple mistakes. So my goal is to get to 20, to go into the corner, to bait out a heavy in the corner 
and to throw my heavy counter to proc masochism with the single shock and then to dump my charges. So the things that I'm keeping track of are my own charges, his power meter. I'm at two bars now. I'm very close to getting to 20 amp charges and I'm ready to do my heavy counter, but there's one aspect of this node that I did not think about and it's the static defense node has the potential to place an armor up on him. And right there, he got to exactly 10 uh, chitin charges or whatever they're called so that he got the armor up from the node, which caused an unstoppable. And just like that, he retaliated with a special two and I wasn't able to get any damage done. So that was a lot, that was a lot. Some time passed. Uh, you can even see that my boosts expired. So I let like a good 10 minutes pass, really thinking about this fight really figuring out what I did wrong. And what I did wrong was basically hit him at all. Because if you get to 10 of those chitin charges, he will get an armor up. The other thing about hitting him is it's gonna give him power, which means I might have to bait a special. So I talked to the other officers. We looked at the video. I tried to cool my head a little bit and I went in again. This is essentially starting all over because he's at 95% health. And this time we're just going to quake style it. So I'm not going to hit him, not even once. I'm just going to take these block hits, uh, just let him hit my block and just push myself against the wall, build some power by taking the block hits, bait some heavies right there. You have to watch out for the unstoppable armor timer. I don't have quite enough power yet to throw this. So I am just staying in the corner. I'm watching out for the unstoppable armor timer. It's about to go again. Okay, there's the armor. So now we can do our heavy counter. We have exactly two bars. He comes at us. We parry over the 20 shocks and this time we land it without any issues and he goes down. So that's obviously what I wanted to happen the first time. But I do think in general that unstoppable armor is so new that the only way to learn these types of things is to experience something like that. So you know what, I don't feel too bad about that. Like that node 20 has claimed a lot of deaths already this season and I definitely learned something. And now I figured out the way to use Nebula there, pretty much foolproof to get it done every time, even if I don't have the synergy team. So overall, I feel pretty good about that. I wasn't too distraught about that death because this is a new tactic. There's so many interactions to keep track of and that's basically what happened. So. We are, um, this is a little bit of a showcase about masteries as well because I was able to keep on the recoil tree masteries for one more fight um, because Cable, you know, used to be the main counter for Terax bosses. And in this fight, we can parry him so we don't even have to worry about heavy counters. Uh, it was a really good idea to put on debuff siphoner, which makes the degens hit harder, as well as suppression. I'm running three out of three petrify, as well as double edge and liquid courage, and five heavy attacks is all it takes to get him down. So Terax, absolutely not a problem there. We were thinking of sending Quake, but I mean, that was way better. That helps with the timer. It's like a no risk fight. Cable loses a little bit of health, but I don't need to use him again for the rest of the war and all is good. So yeah, that one was over in a flash. And next up, this was one of the sketchy fights I took last season, which is Magneto on 2B. So obviously Apocalypse is metal. So you're like, are you crazy? Why are you taking this Magneto? But the thing is you can still turn off hard knock life on this node. Um, simply because you are not considered metal until like the first couple seconds of the fight. So right here, you're going to see my SIG regens me, which is awesome. Then we get the metal. I was able to land the parry to get the disorient on me in that very small window. Right now we're going to go disorient immune. So now we're good there. And I'm, I practiced a little bit of punishing his heavies. And I don't have it down, but also I figured if I missed and I got comboed, it would just help me build power. I know that sounds silly, but now I have two bars of power. I can intercept with a special. Obviously, Apocalypse isn't going to die from one combo, so I would rather do that. Use my power back boosts. And right here, we bait that. I didn't get any of those nice close range uh, special one evades here. Once again, the power back boost give me back to a special one so I can throw that right away. 
and we're pretty handily winning this. The, the other thing to note is there's no more high ground tactic. I think that high ground is one of the things that made this pretty annoying last season, but now I can take block damage for days and it's not an issue. Right here, he's almost dead, so we're just gonna intercept with one more special and he goes down. So yeah, not a super clean fight, but you know, I know that I had plenty of health to play with. I practiced a little bit of punishing those unstoppable heavies. And like I said, even if I missed one, I knew it would just give me some power. It wasn't the end of the world. And he goes down, we heal up for this Mr. Negative. Also notice that I turned off the recoil tree masteries for that because I would have been heal blocked by Magneto. So that would have gotten ugly fast. Um, so yeah, that's, that's part of Master's War, changing your masteries, really countering the fights, boosting, all that kind of stuff. We've got Mr. Negative here. We're already disorient immune and we're just gonna play the node of strike counter. So we do a five hit combo and then I still have one medium and one light to play with. So we go medium lights and we're just gonna throw special ones because I don't think I wanna throw the special two. It's got degeneration and if he's high sig, he's gonna heal off of that. I mean, it's not like he's gonna heal back to full but he does counter degen. So I'm just gonna throw the special ones because when you do that, it fully counters the strike counter, so we're not getting any of the block penetration stuff. Uh, we reset it again, doing plenty of damage. Right now, we're gonna just block the end of the special two because there's no reason to risk evading it at this point. Uh, bait out another heavy. Just notice we're not parry stunning him. Right there, I noticed he ended his combo, so I was able to retaliate. Once again, keeping track of our strike counter charges. Um, I, I mentioned it briefly, but in general, you don't want to stun him because then it gives him light energy, which can be converted to dark energy, which can give the delirium and the reverse controls. But right at the end of the fight, I knew that one more combo would kill him, so I freely parried there. But we just played him stun immune for the whole fight, and it ended up being fine. Not too difficult of a placement, especially because we were disorient immune and we played the node, so the block damage was not hurting us too much. And now for the final fight, you now there's obviously a lot going on, so I'm, I'm still rambling about the previous fight. But our final fight is going to be Nebula versus Nimrod. And I did want to test, I wanted to see if I could do this without recoil on. Um, I just wanted to see how much damage she could do with a 20% boost plus a 15% attack boost. Because I knew even if that special 2 doesn't kill him, I knew that I still fully countered the node. Um, so I just wanted to see how much damage it would do. So he starts off with the unstoppable. We're immediately trying to build to our five amp charges because once we have five amp charges, all of his abilities are shut down, which means that the armors will not proc from unstoppable armor. He won't go unstoppable. We just have to build to our second bar of power. We hit him a couple times. Um, I've said this before about Nimrod. Because of his special lock, you do need to make sure you get all the way over two bars before you dump your shocks and lose your ability accuracy countering ability. So right there, we land a very clean re-parry. We throw that and it is just enough to kill him. So just a little bit of information for you out there. You do not need to be running Liquid Courage and Double Edge in order to kill Nimrod on node 46. Uh, it was just a 20% boost plus a 15% attack. That was plenty to get her down. I mean, to get him down with her. So anyway, we ended up winning this war. Like I said, there were a lot of deaths on all sides. Um, the new unstoppable armor tactic, I feel like we're still learning it. There, there are some fights that are very difficult. And then there are some fights that are just mildly annoying, but they're not much different. And you know, there are just some defenders who have armor ups or there's nodes like those, um, you know, those static defense nodes where they're gonna be getting the armors, they're gonna go unstoppable. There's just things that we're not all thinking about. We didn't really get a long trial run during the off season where we got to test all this stuff. So I do think it is gonna be fairly common to see some higher death counts um, as these alliances are facing each other in the top tiers. 
toward the beginning but i know i know for me i learned a lot about that man thing fight so that i know if i had to take it again what i would do differently there were some other moments like that on both sides but yeah we did end up winning i think we had over 10 deaths but we still won so that kind of just says a little bit about how this tactic is going because sas is a very good alliance as well um but yeah can't complain about a 2-0 start uh, we've got another fun war coming up later today. Should be a good one. And we'll post that video as soon as we can. So thanks for checking it out, guys. And I will catch you in the next one.